everybody, Rose Matter here, and welcome to part two of my Higurashi When They Cry Ray Let's Play. The last episode, uh, we were introduced to this new world that Rika is trapped in. So it seemed like she had escaped her fate uh, of June 1983, but uh, just what, a month later, she ends up in a car accident, dies, and is brought back to probably one of the strangest worlds yet, because uh, Satoshi is there, there's no... Uh, Keichi, no Takano, no Irie, uh, just a whole bunch of people missing. Uh, Sadako and the rest of the group aren't really close with her, so she feels very alone. Her parents are back. There's just all sorts of things going wrong here. So, I mean, with Takano not really kind of being their, like, antagonist in this one, will she still have until Watanagashi to figure out what to do in this world? What's going to happen in this world? Like, also Hanyu? is uh, sealed away and said that she can't come to their world. She's been, like, basically cast out. So Rika has to find a fragment in their world in order to bring Hanyu back. And because Hanyu's not there uh, and used the last of her power, if Rika dies in this world, like, that's it. Game over. There's no do-overs. So very high stakes in this one. And it's just really weird. It's just a very weird world. And Rika feels the same way, like everything's just kind of off, which is kind of cool. Um, so we're going to get back into it, uh, see if Rika can find this fragment, and if she can return back to her original world and have another chance of happiness. So without further ado, let's get back into this. I'd hoped Sadako would be there when I woke up that morning. I'd hoped this baffling world was just a half-awake dream of mine. So when I awoke, not to a familiar ceiling, but to the one in the Furaday main house, I could feel nothing but disappointment. My mind hazy, I recalled the situation I'd been put in. Thanks to my own carelessness, I would go uh, I'd gotten lost in a strange world. Anya's power couldn't reach here, so it would be incredibly difficult to escape. It was like trying to climb up the spider's thread to paradise. But the spider's thread was still there. No matter how thin it was, its presence meant there was still a chance to discover what was blocking Hanyu's power, and I didn't even know what it looked like. The only possible clue was that Hanyu was the deity of Hinemizawa, so it was probably in the village somewhere. I picked up the crystal ball which I'd snuck out of the ritual implement storehouse. The ball gave off a weak and somehow unnatural light. I pressed it to my forehead, and I could sense a faint presence that only I, as a witch, could feel. I was sure whatever I needed to find, I would get the same feeling from it as this. <laughs> so Rika's just going to push things up to her, her forehead and just like, is this it? Is this it? And then everyone's going to be like, Rika lost her mind. But again, like the crystal ball, I'd probably have to hold it to my forehead to sense anything. Exactly. It didn't seem like things would be as simple as wandering about until I felt something. But if it was related to Hanyu's power like the crystal ball was, it was almost certainly in that warehouse. Unfortunately, the storehouse was a complete mess of everything, from ancient torture devices to piles of old documents to mountains of trash I didn't even know how to use. The only place with any semblance of cleanliness was the space around the vessel and the altar. Finding anything, especially an object as small as this crystal ball, would be no simple matter. I heard my mother's voice from the kitchen. The school in this world wasn't the one I went to. If I had the time to go somewhere I didn't belong, then I should be using it to search the storehouse. But there was no proof my search would only take one or two days. I really hated to say it, but I didn't even know what it looked like. Maybe I needed to prepare myself for the search to take years. That's if she has years. Maybe. Maybe in this world she doesn't have, like, a finite... She kind of does because Hanyu did say that, like, her um, presence was growing fainter. So Rika, even if she doesn't die at Watanagashi, she still has only a certain amount of time to be able to get this done. If I didn't go to school, Chie, ever conscientious, would call the house to see if I was staying home that day. That happened. It would cause trouble with both the school and my parents. I couldn't imagine how much time the search would take. If my parents grew suspicious, things would get harder. Slow and steady wins the race, I guess. Although it was frustrating, for weekdays, it would be better to pretend I was going to school like normal. I let out a languid sigh, got up, and decided to eat breakfast. During mealtime, my mother's ramblings about how I was never allowed to go into the ritual storehouse again steadily made the food taste worse. My mother was always insistent and long-winded. I hated this part of her. 
The elders in the village laughed and said she couldn't help it since she did it for her only beloved daughter. But to me, she was just a nuisance. Wow. Damn, imagine like a world where your parents come back and I know everybody's different. Everybody has a different relationship, but just like... To, to not be happy that your parents are alive, you must have really not had a good relationship with them. Tough love wasn't what I needed at the moment. The only thing I could be thankful for was maybe that I didn't have to make breakfast for myself. But I could do it on my own, so I almost would have rather she'd left me to it. After I was done eating and started getting ready for school, my mother continued to nag about me making it on time. Also, in Rika's perspective, like, she's a thousand years old or however, like, she's pretty much an adult in a child body, so it must be even worse to, like, be nagged at from someone that you're like, mentally, I am older than you. How aggravating. Maybe going to school wasn't so bad. I wouldn't have to see my mother's face for half a day. I thanked her for the food, cleaned my plate and utensils in the sink, and left immediately for school. If everything was going to betray my expectations anyway, I wish class would too. But even in this world, class went the exact way as the world I knew. I thought I'd escaped that world, and now it was repeating. Thinking that way made me feel even more listless. Normally I'd distract myself by teasing Sadako, but her seat was far away from mine. She was probably also so bored with class she didn't know what to do with herself. Satoshi, earnestly studying in the next seat over, was constantly trying to get her to focus. Neon seemed to be butting into Reina's business, too. Still can't get over that, too. Reina instead of Rena, But they weren't fooling around. It was a strange, though pleasant sight. They were helping one another learn. Actually, they weren't the only pleasant sight. Everyone in the classroom was like that. I felt like I was the only one left out. It must feel like she's kind of looking, like she's on the outside looking in, like she's not of this world and she's not supposed to be here. And just feels kind of like a transplant. That must be such a strange feeling. I didn't know whether my seat was in its own row because of the odd number of students, or if I'd chosen the seat on purpose in this world, but it felt like my seat was separated from the rest of the classroom. When lunchtime came, I felt even more alienated. My classmates formed groups with friends and took out their food. The club members who would always eat with me weren't here. Sadako was part of a circle of several friends, including her brother. There was no place for me to wedge myself into. Mion and Reina were sitting face to face as they ate. No room for me there, either. Nobody asked me if I wanted to eat with them. And they had fun eating their own meals, so this seemed natural, like it was something that happened every day. For a short while I waited, hoping for Sadako, or Mion, or Reina to invite me over. After the clock's minute hand moved five, then ten places, I realized I might even be left behind in eating, and finally gave up and opened my bento box. Inside were the leftovers of last night's burned hamburger steak and white rice with nori seaweed that was now sticky. Spinach wrapped with gooey nori. She's probably like, oh man, I could really use some of Rena's cooking right now. And the remains of kinpira with chopped burdock roots also burned. I guess I'd forgotten about that. For some reason, my mother overcooked everything. She's like, this is the worst world ever. <laughs> that's just, that's just the, the straw that broke the camel's back. Like, on top of everything else, she has to eat bad food. Summer is dangerous if you don't let the heat in, was a favorite phrase of hers. She would cook steaks until they were rock hard, and even when she made fish, she would turn half their insides to ash. Even Sadako was better than that. At least she knew how hot to cook things. Ah, uh, and when I learned how to cook from Hanyu and started to make things better than my mother, she must not have been happy. It tasted terrible, too. No presentation, either. If Miyam decided to have a bento contest and I only had this, I'd end up in last place. But... There was no club in this world, so I didn't have to worry about that. Sadako's happy laughter not being directed at me made me feel sad. I wonder if, like, the, um, the recent anime, if Sadako has anything to do with the world being all messed up. Suddenly our eyes met. Maybe she wanted Satoshi back, and maybe she, like, Sadako got this world with her brother back, but it messed up Rika's world, and it just, like, threw everything off. Did my feelings get through? Sadako burst out of her seat and glared at me. Whoa. Whoa. Damn. 
じゃないもんずーっとジロジロ見てんの気持ち悪いったらありゃしない Sadako and her friends began whispering amongst themselves while looking at me. I couldn't hear what they said, but I could easily imagine them enjoying themselves. I angled my desk a little so I couldn't see Sadako and the others. This is so sad. At first, I'd call this world Sadako's cold, but it looked like I was mistaken. This world Sadako either didn't like me or outright hated me. Maybe, maybe Sadako does have something to do with this. And then the other kids close to my age seem to have formed a community around her. Rika is no longer the queen bee in this world. With no place for me in it, so they all hated me too. Not that Sadako was like hated or anything, like her classmates liked her, but Sadako was the one kind of ostracized from the village and talked about and whispered about because of her family. And now it seems like Rika is kind of, at least at school that way. The hardened ash-like steak tasted of salt. Why did I have to feel this sad and lonely when I ate? In all the other worlds, all the club members would be enjoying lunch together. Sadako would be there, and Rena, and Mion, and Keichi. Everyone would be having fun and spending their break cheerfully and noisily. That was when Rena came over and peered into my bento box. I like it still shows it as Rena, not Rena. And it was clear Reyna had come over to try and comfort my distress, and for some reason that was frustrating, so I didn't want to answer her. <laughs> Rika's like, please give me some of your food. When I stayed silent, she held out an octopus-shaped sausage in front of me. <laughs> Reyna, trying to be nice as I ate lunch alone, hated by my classmates. I just couldn't accept it. I suddenly said I was going to wash my hands, then left. And in a bathroom stall, I covered my face with toilet paper and cried. Oh, gosh. The tears soaked through the paper and crinkled it up, but I didn't care. This was fine. It was better if I didn't have friends in this world. I had plenty of friends in the one I needed to return to. There, even Sadako was my irreplaceable best friend. And all the club members who'd never leave me alone during lunch hour were waiting for me. Why would I be sad some Sadako I didn't know was being mean to me in a world I didn't care about? Why would I be? But despite the lies I told myself, I couldn't stop crying for a while. I decided to steal my resolve and wait for school to end. Then I'd run back home, saying I was going out to play, and sneak into the Ritual Implement storehouse again. That was the only way I could get back to my original world. I had to try and do my best for that purpose alone. Okay. I looked into the mirror in the bathroom to see a face red from crying. If Chie saw me like this, things would probably get even more complicated. I washed my face and spent the rest of lunch break quietly in a corner of the classroom. After school, I literally dashed out of the building. It would be a huge pain if I ended up caught in the rush of the other classmates as they headed out to go play. I think Satoshi called after me, but I ignored him. He was probably just trying to apologize for his sister about what happened during lunch. I didn't care about that. I didn't want to stay in this horrible world a second more than I needed to. I ran full speed back to the house, ignored my mother when she asked, as usual, if I had any homework, and searched for a lantern. When I told her I was going out to play, and without waiting for a response, burst out of the house. Then I went around the shrine and looked for my father. I saw a note hanging on the assembly hall that said there was a shrine association meeting. I could hear my father's voice amidst the light-hearted chatter. It was the same opportunity I had yesterday. Today I'd have to be careful not to let on I was inside. After making sure nobody was looking, I climbed up the tree I got in the hang-up yesterday. I had been scared of the height before, but I wasn't afraid any longer, probably because I'd cried my eyes out and resolved myself during lunch. What I really had to be afraid of wasn't heights, or my parents, or the cold-hearted Sadako. It was not being able to return to my original world. The next scariest thing would be losing contact with Hanyu, I think. In the darkness of the storehouse, I took the crystal ball out of my pocket. Weak glow seemed a little more energetic than yesterday. Maybe she rested, a little of her power would come back. Nevertheless, it was still weak. If I wasted it on fruitless conversation, the light might go out entirely. 
I firmly squashed down the desire to check and make sure I could still call her and turned on the lantern. It was time to go treasure hunt. Was there anything around? Anything only I could feel? Something that felt the same as this crystal ball, somewhere. I closed my eyes, honed my senses, and hoped. But all I heard were the cries of cicadas. I hadn't expected anything less. It looked like this would be a tough nut to crack. <sighs> Searching the entire storehouse. How much time would that take? I didn't want to imagine it. But I had to do it, or I couldn't go home. I do it systematically. Start in the corner and go in order. Without knowing what it looked like, I'd start in the corner and go from there, not even letting water pass. Despite all that, I had no proof it was even in here. I felt like it would be easier to just fight Takano and the mountain dogs again. Yeah, probably Hanyu feels like her only, like, companion in this world, but she's gotta be careful. She talks too loudly, her dad's gonna catch her again. So she's in June, like, and it's been a week, so I wonder what Tanagashi is it coming up. ほうちしているかもしれない。正直、辛いわ。せめて形だけでも分かれば、あるいは最後伝の中にあるという保証でもあれば、ずっとここに閉じこもっていると、頭がどうにかなってしまいそうよ。わかります。とても辛い探し物
その何かが簡単に燃やせるものであることを祈るわ岩だった日には溶鉱炉にでも放り込まなきゃならなくなるわね実はリカそのかけらが宿るのがものではなく人である可能性もありますのです What? What if it is Sonoko? I bet it is I bet it is What? It's just like The, uh, it's like that anime, the one that, like, what was it, from two, three years, 2020 or 2021? Sotsu, where it was just like they were at, they were like fighting with each other for each of them, they wanted their world, where everything was the way they wanted it. Except it was slightly different with Sadako, like before they were old enough to be going to, like, university and stuff, and now they're still pretty young, but maybe Sadako just wanted her brother back so bad. But, like, in that perfect world, like, Satoshi was there, he was just... Not doing great, so I don't know. Could be wrong, but. Naruto. Kakera wa omoi nanda mon ne. Mono ni yadoru bakari te wake janai kamo ne. Rika didn't even pause. She's like, all right, if I have to burn a person, I gotta burn a person. Demo hanyu. Kari ni hito datta ra dou suru no? Masaka, iai te hai ni shiro te yun janai de shou ne. Hito no imi wa inochi no katachi ga ushinaware ta jite. Or, okay, Hanyu's like. And he's like, you might not have to burn them, but you do have to kill them. Once again, Rika totally fine with this. I guess in her world, like, these people don't even... This is a world that shouldn't exist, so she's like, eh, if I have to kill someone in this world, once I go to the other world, it's like it didn't happen. I'd believe until now I'd been searching for an object, but maybe it doesn't even have to be that. I'd have no problem burning an object. But if it wasn't an object, but a person... もう逆手にとって先にそれを探るのもてね仮に人だったらやっぱりお社様に縁の近い人はいおそらくはそれが私自身いえないですリカ自身が僕を拒む欠片だったなら、こうして僕と話すことも出来ないはずなのですとなれ
私はその努力に限界なんてないって思った。But Keiichi changed that. There's no limit to effort, but you have to talk to a lot of people to get their advice on whether your efforts are misplaced or not. That's why I was talking about it with Hanyu, the only one who shared my current situation. And Hanyu said if the object possessing the fragment was a person, I had to kill them. I would want to avoid that, of course, if there was any other way. But if she said that was the only way, then I, wasn't, I wouldn't hesitate. That was all. あとは謝るわ。きついことを言いすぎた。あんたにできることは。ヒント探しと私が挫折しないよう。指揮を保つことくらいなのよね。自らの手で鍵を探せない。もどかしさを理解してなかったわ。理解よりは辛くありませんの
When I returned to the main house, surrounded by the cries of Higurashi that I'd grown completely tired of, there was a tightly packed case of beer near the front door, and three bottles of wine. The beer case was probably for a drinking party at the Shrine's Assembly Hall or something. My father didn't drink beer because he liked it, so I knew it had to be for the Assembly Hall. I delivered it here before the party so he could chill it beforehand in the Assembly Hall refrigerator. And the wine probably belonged to my father. My father enjoys Western spirits and wine most of all. And wine, at the same time, was something I enjoyed as well. Before, after my parents had died in 1981, I'd gotten wine by bringing it from the main house, but my parents were alive in this world so I couldn't do that. I stared at the bottles longingly as I tried to open the door, receiving the clack of its lock in response. I took a key from my pocket, unlocked the door, went in, and saw a note addressed to me right upon entering. It was from my mother. The note said an accident had suddenly occurred at the Kimiyoshi house, and they'd gone out to help with a memorial service. What? Oh, they'd be late coming back. And so on and so forth. Okay, so just an accident. I just heard something about a memorial service. I was like, oh shit. Uh, I wonder when the bad starts really, like, when the bad stuff will start happening in this world, if it does. Written as a postscript was a notice the brewer would be bringing alcohol and to take it inside the front door once I got back from them. <laughs> She's like, I'll just have a little sippy sip of this wine while they're gone. I see. That must have been referring to all of this. If the person had come while I was here, I could have told them to put it inside, but I couldn't bear to see them outside like this. Uh, put it here before I got back. And it would be a pain if my mother started rambling about me being inconsiderate later. I made a sour face, not caring who saw, and pulled the case of beer through the front door. Next, I stood before the wine bottles and solidified my thoughts. Couldn't there have been a slip-up with the order? Oh, she is going to be like, I'll just take one, one for myself. It was a brewery in a small village. If my father called to say he'd ordered one more bottle, they'd probably bring over another one without a second thought. So what would it matter if one of them disappeared? I always dilute it before drinking, so I'd be able to enjoy one bottle of wine for a pretty long time. And she's like, and there's no Hanyu here to nag me about it. Despite being in the entrance, I belatedly looked around, grabbed a bottle, ran into my room, and then pushed it into the winter futon in my closet I wouldn't use for a while. Actually, my parents live here too, so I won't have many chances to drink. I ran to the kitchen, grabbed a glass, Ike, Ike? <laughs> ice, a corkscrew, and a carton of orange juice, and ran back to my room. I put the corkscrew on the wine bottle and was overwhelmed by the urge to wet my tongue with the nostalgic flavor as soon as I could. How was I supposed to survive in this world without enjoying a good wine? I poured some into the glass, and just listening to the orange juice splashing in to fill it up made my mouth water like a dog. If I dilute it this much, it will just look like orange juice from the outside, but it was the nostalgic flavor that belonged to my world. At one time, this had been the flavor of my tears of defeat, shed for the unbreakable June of 1983. But now, even those tears of defeat felt sweet and tender. Those dead-end worlds were very painful, but I was still surrounded by my kind friends. I had the leeway to choose to surrender to Takano and continue lazily living in that infinite loop. But even that warmth was absent in this world. This made, week, uh, this made a week now since I came here. With no prospects of returning to my previous world, I'd resolved myself to staying here for a long time, but a week in, it had already driven me to drink. It'll be fine. Those worlds had driven me to the same state. And I still managed, lazily doing my best as I soaked in wine, right? I needed to be released from this Rika for a day quickly. Nobody in this world would understand that, even if I explained it. That meant I had no allies here. If I told somebody, they'd think I'd gone crazy. But considering this world's Rika Furde, that was only natural. This world's Rika Furde was a dour girl without a single friend, and one day she'd been hit in the uh, hit by a ball in the schoolyard and started saying things she didn't belong in this world. That big doctor Yamamoto heard about this, he'd probably make a huge fuss about the impact having caused brain damage. But that would make the most sense to the people who lived here. At the very least, until I arrived, Rika Furde was Rika Furde, the correct being for this world. Maybe it was more appropriate to say that one day, I, someone different from this world's Rika, appeared then took over Rika's body. Right. Am I not Rika Furde? Well, no. This world's Rika Furde was this world's Rika Furde, a different being than me. 
I'd simply been interpreting her as being the same as me, even when I was in different worlds, until now. When I thought about that, leaving aside whether I'd been living happily, I felt like I'd done something bad to this world's Rika for a day. Of course, it was too late to apologize now, and I couldn't give this body back to her anymore. If there was a way to apologize, it would be to acknowledge this world's Rika for a day as being of her own. Because if I called myself Rika for a day, the girl who already existed would vanish from this life, which meant the only way to apologize was to not call myself Rika for a day. Well, that had been bothering me for a long time. I'd long felt my young self pampered as the reincarnation of Oyashiro-sama and my old self, who had awakened and traveled countless worlds, had different personalities. I wonder if she's going to start calling her, like, the witch. She'll be like, I'm Burn Castell. But if I thought of them not as personalities, but if, as different beings entirely, right now I was no longer Rika Furaday. I... Who am I? I stared vacantly at the wine bottle. Did I like this brand? My father always loved to drink this wine. As a result, I'd borrowed it in countless worlds, and I loved to drink it even now. Right now, I couldn't even be lazy without borrowing the power of alcohol, and this wine comforted me just a little. At this point, I couldn't go on living without this wine. So in other words, I wasn't alive, but the wine was. We're getting all philosophical up in here. I, we're back to like the Umaneko thing of who am I? <laughs> This is much more of a philo- I mean, Higurashi could be seen definitely as like a philosophical thing about the different worlds and, uh, you know, who you are in those worlds and stuff, but this is really leaning into it, which meant I wasn't Rika Furaday and that I was the wine. Damn, girl getting plastered already. She's already like, I am the wine. <laughs> I stared at the Western letters of the brand name written on the wine bottle, which I didn't know how to pronounce, and thought to myself it was the name of me. Is she going to go by the name of the wine bottle? Like, I am wine. <laughs> My name is Rika Furaday. No, not that. Oh, but this. Burncastle, she is. I don't know what that means. Is that where she got the name? She got the name from a bottle? Like what she saw in a wine bottle? That's... Okay. Maybe I'll ask my father. That is hilarious, the idea of, like, she got her witch name from just, like, reading it off a wine bottle. Okay. Federica Burncastle. Uh, whatever. What a silly name that is. This is wild. <laughs> My thoughts began to slur and muddle. Cheers to this shithole of a world. I never, like, looked up the name of, like, because... Like, I've... You know, you see it, like, they have, and I thought it was just like, oh, it's like a philosopher or some sort of maybe an author, a poet, or somebody in time. Uh, and maybe the wine bottle is named after that person, but I never actually looked into, like, is, you know, the Frederica Burncastell, is that, like, a real person? And sure, you guys have told me before about, like, Charge complete. who that is, but that's still a hilarious idea that she got the name off of a wine bottle. <laughs> Is Rika going to be like, I'm going to make myself my sweet, cute self, and I'm going to make everybody love me in this world. I'm going to do, like, you know, after she leaves this world, maybe she's going to be like, I'm going to try and make this Rika's life a better one. Maybe I'll try and be more outgoing and try and get her some friends before I go. As I thanked my mother and patted her shoulders, I brushed her head. It was all a show, of course. If she had the same power inside her as Hanyu, and by touching her like this, I'd be able to sense it, even if it was feeble. But I did feel that power from my mother. Oh, 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 that's what she's doing. Okay, I... Yeah, that's right, she might kill her parents or anybody else who... Never mind, never mind, I was trying to attribute it to something wholesome. If I felt that power from my mother, could I kill her on the spot? I wouldn't hesitate to kill, but I couldn't say I wouldn't hesitate right here and now. Because I would rather she did not have that power inside her. And at the same time, I was uneasy about what to do next if she didn't. My mother laughed like it tickled, but contrary to what she thought, I was carefully checking if I needed to kill her. <laughs> My mother told me that was enough, smiling in a way that was not as dissatisfied as her words implied. Even after being so scrupulous about touching her, I couldn't feel any trace of the power. 
My mother wasn't the one who held the fragment. And I'd already felt my father's head. It wasn't him either. If it wasn't either of the two people closest to the legend of Oyashiro-sama, then it was improbable the fragment was in a person. It was a happy thing, not having to kill anyone. That meant one of my clues was now meaningless. That said, even though the possibility was unlikely, I'd still have to touch the heads of the other people in the village every chance I got just to make sure. <laughs> All of a sudden, Rika's going for kind of like a, like she said, a dour, quiet girl, too. Like, she's just going to be very affectionate with everybody, and... In the world where everybody loves her, that would probably go over a little bit better, but here she might just be like, oh, she's being weird. And at the same time, I had to continue my deciphering of the pile of documents in the ritual implement storehouse. Whichever I was supposed to choose, the labor of reading through that entire mountain, or the sin of killing someone, I was going to need much more than a little time. And more wine. I'd lost track of how many mornings it had been since I drifted to this world. And this morning was frustratingly the same as the last world, the one I knew. They said next Sunday was the Watanagashi Festival. Alright, there we go. We finally have, like, a date. This was the first time I didn't care whatsoever about it. For Hinebizawa, facing total eviction by next year, this would be their very last festival. They were apparently planning to put on a magnificent show to end things with. My normal world responsibility of performing a dedication dance as the last survivor of the Faraday family didn't exist in this world either. Still, I wasn't expected to simply go off and have fun. They would have me help with things that kids could help with, like giving out boiled rice and answering the phone. I'd gotten used to going to school alone, too. When I went to school with Sadako, it was always a lively morning with us running and falling everywhere. But that, too, was beginning to feel like a memory of the distant past. With several days already behind me, and my mind settled, I'd stopped crying about small memories like that. Everything I did was for the sake of returning to my original world. I might curse the trouble it was taking, but I would never cry again. So even when I met Sadako at the school gate and said good morning, only to be bluntly ignored like always, it didn't make me sad. The real Sadako was, incompar was an incomparable friend of mine. Even if a fake Sadako ignored me, it wouldn't hurt me inside anymore. Mion wasn't outright cold like Sadako was, but she didn't seem to think of me as any more than one of her many classmates. Reina seemed like she was actually trying to talk to me, but that was because I was isolated. She was acting out of a kind of pity, and it seemed sadder to accept that. So I'd started reacting nastily to Reina's unwanted attention. Oh no. I was hoping. I was hoping that maybe, like, Rika would be like, maybe I'll try to, uh, for taking over this Rika's body, maybe I will... Try and, like, leave her in a better state than she was in, but instead she's just isolating more. After a few exchanges like that, she'd realized I didn't want her doing this and stopped bothering me. I guess she's like, I don't want to get attached to any of these people because I'm going to leave this world anyway. Being all alone wasn't sad anymore. It was only natural I'd be alone as an outsider to this false world. In fact, the less annoying acquaintances I needed, the easier it was for me. That's right. Easier. When I'd started feeling that way, then even if nobody talked to me during lunch, nobody invited me to eat with them, and nobody asked me to play after school, I was totally okay with it. With so few students in the classroom, if I took out a book not related to the class, Chie would confiscate it right away. I probably wouldn't be able to read the old documents while she was teaching. All I could do is wrap them in covers I made from flipping over leaflets and folding them, and spent my free time at school pretending I was reading a regular book. We weren't allowed to bring comics to school, but the unspoken agreement was that you could read novels as long as you didn't do it during class. If I could just ignore the hustle and bustle, lunch break was the time I could focus the most. Somewhere in those countless worlds, there was a time where I got bored with my daily life and read a lot of old documents. Thanks to that, I knew the gist of their contents. I just hoped there was a clue somewhere in them about the fragment rejecting Hanyu from this world. It had been raining since midday. All my classmates had stayed in the classroom for break, venting their pent-up energy indoors. Thanks to that, it was a bothersome, loud, and uncomfortable day for me. At the same time as those words, my old document was taken from me, and there was Sadako's face smiling evilly. 
Sadako looked at the old document she'd stolen from me with disgust. I don't know, man. I feel like Sadako, I, she's got something to do with this. I just have a feeling. And maybe she knows what Rika's reading and she's trying to, like, stop Rika from figuring out what to do because, like, this is Sadako's, maybe her almost ideal world. Because she's got her brother back. Well, someone is ignorant to Sadako and her parents, right? She still has her parents, too. Someone as ignorant as Sadako had no way to understand it. I'd learned how to read classical Japanese from my father, and even I had to go over each line several times to figure it out. Of course, for Sadako, it wasn't about what it said. She seemed more amused at how unsanitary it looked, with dirty letters written on the dirty paper. I don't like this dark Sadako. The, the last couple of things that I've seen with Higurashi has not done Sadako in a good light, and I don't like it. But even if it was nothing more than a filthy book to her, to me, it was something that could hold a clue. When I tried to snatch it back, she threw it to another friend as though she'd seen the attempt coming miles away. It's just so sad, like, Sonico in this world is such a bully. <laughs> the girl who caught it threw it to another kid. And that kid, after his face scrunched up at the filth being given to him, grinned like an idiot and threw it to someone else. And I'm guessing... Chie's not here too. Me own. <laughs> I don't like that Mion's getting in on this either. Several of my classmates threw it amongst themselves whenever I chased after it, teasing me. At some point, Mion had joined their circle, and it had turned into a classroom-wide bullying. Today wasn't the first time this had happened. Actually, maybe before I came here, it was always like this. Even in a classroom with just ten people, an order existed, and so did clicks. I don't like that. Like, ah. The Mion of the other world wouldn't do this either. This does feel like a kind of messed up world. Rena's the only one who feels like her normal self. Belonging to none and not wanting to. I was the weakling in the room, and thus clearly the one it was okay to torment. Reyna was the only one who said they should stop, but nobody listened to her. My classmates wanted to fool around, and they probably wanted to tell her I was the only toy in the room, so why shouldn't they play with her during lunch break? But in the last few days, it had left heartwarming territory and moved into aggravating territory. This Sadako clearly treated me with spite. When I thought about it now, the accident with the ball in the schoolyard that brought me to this world, she'd obviously been aiming for Rika, who had just been standing there in the yard. Was Sadako always this oblivious to the pain of others? She understood people's pain best, because even though she said mean things, she'd been through the worst of anyone. Oh my gosh. I guess so, right? Like, she knows what it's like to be ostracized, so... Uh... But in this world, she doesn't. So, I guess in some some ways, like, your pain can either turn you into a bully, or it can make you more sympathetic to others' pain, and then if you never really have to suffer... That's just sad to think, like, is this what Sadako would have been like? She just doesn't have nat natural empathy because she hasn't been through something... bad herself? I see. In this world, Sadako's parents were alive and the villagers didn't torment her. I don't like that this would be, like, baseline Sadako. In other words, she hadn't been through the worst of anyone. Personality isn't wholly determined from birth. It's also something cultivated over many events and experiences. Oh, now we're getting into, like, psychology, a little bit of sociology uh, aspects here about, like, cliques and bullying and, like, the whole thing about nature versus nurture, all that good stuff. So yeah, Sadako got all the good roles. Rika got all the bad roles. I'm really thinking that Sadako, just like in the anime, she has something to do with this world. Maybe she cast Han you out. With all her lucky dice rolls, this was how Sadako's personality had turned out in this world. In other words, this Sadako was only the same on the outside, but a completely different person from my best friend on the inside. Once I understood that, the sadness of Sadako tormenting me disappeared. And in its place, she began to look like a horrible brat just getting in the way of my haste to return to my original world. Oh shit, is Rika gonna fight back? Don't bother me. I don't care what any of you do in this lunatic world, but I'm desperately working to return to my original one. So stay out of my way. The old document made its way back to Sadako again. This time, Sadako started teasing me, waving it around and saying to come get it. She held her nose and made a sour face like she was holding up something filthy, earning laughs and jeers from the rest of the class. I went straight for Sadako and of course she threw it to the next one in line. She must have thought it would make me go over there next. 
quote, but I didn't care about where the document was. Oh, shit. And I've always been such a big, like, defender of Sadako, of, like, when all the horrible things she went through. But in this one, I'm just like, oh, I just want Rika to be, like, I don't want Sadako to get hurt, but I want, like, Rika to kind of, like, stand up for herself, and maybe that'll take Sadako down a peg, you know? Instead, I charge straight at Sadako. I tucked my nails in the bases of my fingers and clenched my fist. Oh, shit. I decided this was the fastest method to explain how important this was. Make her understand and prevent any reprisals, all in a very short period of time. I swung my right fist at Sadako's face. The tip of my fist plowed into her face below her left eye, leaving an imprint that wouldn't soon disappear. I promptly grabbed a clump of her hair and pushed her to the floor, and took a nearby chair and raised it over my head before smashing it into her a few times. Holy shit! Holy shit, wow. Oh my gosh. Sadako didn't know what had just happened. Confused by the sudden violence, she curled up like a turtle. It looked a little crazy hitting her with a chair like this, but it wouldn't hurt her very badly. I raised the chair, then slammed it down over the top of Sadako's upper body. It's like the other way around, right? Sadako in, in the other world, she was the one that everybody kind of ostracized a little bit. Not the classmates necessarily, but now it's Rika and... Oh, boy, oh, boy. I raised the chair and slammed it down over top of Sadako's upper body exactly as if to hold her to the ground. I lifted my foot above the chair and stomped on it like I was hammering in a nail. Sometimes that has, sometimes it has to happen. Like, you need to get, like, with a bully. You just gotta let them know that, like, if you stand up for yourself, sometimes they'll back down, sometimes they won't, but... I don't know, we'll see. Okay, uh, stomped out like I was hammering in a nail. Sato-ko.ほほほ。あんた少し許さい。私の親友と同じ顔してるから、ちょっと多めに見てきたけど、いい加減。あんたのその感高い声にもイラついてきたわ。It's oh. just always creeps me out a little bit when she switches to her adult voice. Her witch voice. 私の半径 1メートル以内に入ったら、言い訳なしで即ぶん殴るから。<clears throat> and then, like a lot of bullies, as soon as you fight back, like, she immediately just, like, tucked herself away and is just not fighting back. I stomped on the chair again and finally saw an expression of fear on Sadako's face. I knew this was the best answer. When given the chance, I had to give it to her straight. This was like what happened in uh, Sotsu, right? They got into that fight in the classroom. I don't know if it was Sadako that hit Rika with the chair, or Rika hit Sadako with the chair. But it made me mad. I was the last one in the world who wanted to see Sadako looking like that. I was the one who was forcing her to make that expression. It made me sick. Getting flashbacks to when Sadako... ...had that expression when she had, like, the, uh... ...the outburst, you know, from her abuse, but it was fine in the end. The Sadako wasn't the one I knew, after all. And one day I'd leave this world for sure. Even if I killed her on the spot, it wouldn't have anything to do with the Sadako of my world. That's why it didn't hurt inside, seeing her look at me so terrified. <laughs> Rena plucked the document from a bewildered classmate and returned it to me. I kicked the chair over, indicating to Sadako she'd been released. But even that action made her so scared she was frozen in place. I didn't waste time going back to my own seat. Then Sadako began to bawl shamelessly, and Satoshi ran over, making a big overprotective fuss about the uh, nurse's office and whatnot. The noise quickly reached the faculty room, and Chie and the principal soon burst in. While Chie was talking, the principal must have asked me on what happened in the classroom. Mion spoke to him in hushed tones, glancing my way. She was probably saying she had no part in this. Nasty Mion said... Uh, Nasty Mion might say that. 
He didn't betray my expectation. The principal came over to me and told me to come with him to the principal's office. This usually happens when a bullied child happens to bully back. Yeah. A side effect of the bully, perhaps. Yep, the bully gets... You know, the person who is bullied tends to be the one who gets punished. I was seriously fed up with everything, but my goal had only been to scare Sadako off from bothering me ever again. Now that I'd done that, I decided I need to calm the situation down. After being brought to the principal's office, he kept asking me why I punched Sadako and lectured me violence was never the answer. But regarding her taking my book and tormenting he, he admitted she was at fault and I felt a little relieved. Mm. まあ、そんなところなのです。わしも古文は嫌いではないが、これはなかなかに難読だ。君には読めるのかね。読めなきゃ読みませんです。いや、それは道理である。どういう内容のことが書いてあるのか、少し校長先生にも教えてくれんか
but Sadako was in her rebellious face. It would take a lot more than that to make her wince. She returned my glare in kind as if to say she'd get me back next time. She sighed, unable to do much about our insincere apologies. And then the bell signaling the end of lunch break ring. I wonder if Sadako's gonna, like, ambush me on the way home or something and attack me. Chie followed Sadako and left the nurse's office. I didn't give them so much as a glance and just held my right hand out to Yamamoto. The stinging pain of the disinfectant was somehow weak. The hand receiving treatment didn't even feel like my hand. I suppose it wouldn't. It's Rika Furade's hand, not mine. <laughs> That must have been Yamamoto's interpretation of the strained atmosphere in the classroom. It's weird that they say doctor and not Yamamoto. I don't know. My feelings are so far that, like, Yamamoto is kind of a new character that's been introduced to this, so maybe he's got something to do, maybe he's the fragment, or something to do with him, or it's Sadako. Those are my two guesses for, like, who, who the fragment can be or how it could be connected to this world. If he were convinced of that, then maybe it was fine. It didn't matter to me. Wait, does he know that or is he just interpreting that as such? He seems to know a lot about Rika. Oh, yeah. I forgot about them. Okay, I have to assume that, I guess, like, Irie, like, maybe this teacher, or this doctor, he comes to the school a lot, so he knew, but he seems to know a lot about Rika, like, more than he should. I see. Even Rika Furde had friends for a while in this world. And thanks to a stroke of bad luck. <laughs> I was waiting for her to say they had to be Tomotake. Oh, were the names Tomotake and Okomurokun? Like, she's like, really? Those were my only friends? <laughs> thanks to a stroke of bad luck, they all transferred out together and left her behind. Demo.友達は彼らだけじゃないんじゃないかね。寂しい気持ちもわかるし、来年までの中かもしれないけど、クラスの他の子とも友達になって楽しくやっていった方が君にとってもいいんじゃないかい？別に親しくなりたくなんかないし、
It looked like he wasn't Iria's replacement for nothing. For some reason, I felt like opening up a little to him. Maybe it was because he didn't exist in the world I knew. Right now, everyone who was in the world I knew, no matter who it was, made me uncomfortable. That was why I felt like opening up specifically to someone who wasn't in that world. After all, Yamamoto probably thought I was just a girl hitting puberty. Whatever nonsense I spouted, he would nod and agree. ベルン<笑> イフの世界。同じ日南沢だけど、では、昭和昭和58年の後も the first step in counseling was to agree to whatever absurd story the patient came out with. If I didn't know that piece of trivia, I might have teared up at Yamamoto telling me to continue. But I couldn't resist the temptation to keep going. He encouraged me, and I kept talking. You know, it's a good counselor when they know that you're like, they, the person knows what you're doing, but you feel compelled to go along with it anyway. In that world, there was a big protest movement we called the Dam Conflict, and it took years for them to withdraw the proposal. And through that conflict, the villagers came together. Everyone got along. All the students were friends, and we even had transfer students come in from outside the village. And we made a club where we'd play games, with Mion as the president. And while Sadako was very unfortunate, she was good friends with me. And then, and then... <laughs> it is weird to have him laugh while he's saying that. Like, oh man, she went through such horrible things. Ha ha ha. それに、この <sighs> Yamamoto heaved a heavy sigh and stared out the window with his arms folded. It looked like the rain outside had let up somewhat, but it was still drizzling. After keeping his silence for a few moments, Yamamoto spoke up. <laughs> ここは私の世界じゃないんですから。確かに。そんな楽しい雛沢なら一刻も早く元の世界に帰りたいよな。でも帰る方法はあるのかね。あります。でも探すのはとても大変です。ほう。それはどんな方法だい？多分この雛
そのかけらのせいで私を元の世界に戻す力を持った羽生いえお社様がこの世界へ来られないのですお社様って古出神社に祀られてるあの神様のお社様説明すると長いですがそんなところです私は彼女と一緒にあまたの世界を巡ってきましたこの世界はその結果に漂着した世界の一つでしかありませんだから彼女が来てくれればすぐにでも出ていくつもり急に話が大きくなったねつまり君はお社様と一緒にこの世界へ来たわけだ Man, I was gonna say, he seems to be catching on pretty well. I still have my thoughts about this guy. Like, maybe similar to the other worlds, like where she wins by reaching out to people, maybe that's what she has to do. Maybe she has to reach out to Yamamoto to find the fragment. ということかね、平たく言うとそういうことです。彼女をこちらに呼びたくても、彼女を阻害するかけらが、この雛見沢のどこかにある。それを見つけ出して、焼いてしまわないと、私は元の世界へ帰れない。そのかけらというのはどこにあるんだいどこかにあるの、かけらは、重い。だからそれが宿る何かどんな形をしているものに宿っているのかわからないし宿っているのがものという保証もない人間に宿っているのかもしれない何もわからないんです君はものだったら役と言ったね人だったらどうするんだい羽生は人の場合なら<laughs> okay, I know that Rika said that she feels comfortable talking to him because he's not of this world, but maybe she should have kept that information to herself. Like, her saying that, like, I might have to kill somebody. むしろ羽生が本名。親代様なんて名前は、後世の村人の誰かがつけた、適当な名前じゃないなるほど。それが、君の読んでいた本に書いてあったのかな別にそういうわけじゃないわ。Yamamoto's arms remained folded and he groaned in thought. Another silence settled, with rain being the only audible sound. Maybe I'd gotten nervous. I knew it wouldn't solve anything to talk about it, but I did anyway. Yamamoto was probably wondering if something was wrong with my brain. I could guess that by looking at his complicated expression. So, no, Kakera, a Mitskari, so, okay? Wakaranai, wa. Hanyu ni kanshou suru chikara na no da kara. Oyashiro sama ni yukari no aru nani ka ni hinto ga aru njanai ka to omote. Komonjo yonde iru tokoro. Sagashi mono no hinto sagashiteru. そんな状態ねそうか見つかるといいねでもそれが人だったら君はどうするんだいまさか本当に殺しちゃう気なのかねそういうふうに聞かれると返答に困るけどノリカ keep your mouth shut keep your mouth shut <laughs> pretend you're talking to a police officer don't say anything that can incriminate you それしか元の世界に戻る方法がないなら私は躊躇しないかもしれないどうせ私の世界から見ればこの世界は妄想や白チュームと同じ誰が死んだって私の世界では生きてるし関係ないものなるほどなるほどでもちょっと待ちなさい君にとってこの世界は夢の中なのかもしれないがわしにとってはここは自分の世界でねたとえ誰であっても殺されちゃ困る理屈は分かってるし
私も人殺しなんてせずに帰れるならそれに越したことはないわ話題を戻そう君に元の世界への帰り方を教えてくれるその羽生はどうやって君にそれを伝えるんだいお告げみたいなものがあるのかいそれとも夢枕に立つそんな曖昧なものじゃない会話するのよある水晶玉が羽生と私の通信機の役目を果たすのふーんわしもその羽生と話すことはできるかね That would be the fastest way. If he could talk to Hanyu directly, that would be enough to prove my nonsense true. But I felt uneasy. Even if I could talk to her, Yamamoto might not be able to. Those kinds of magic items come up pretty often in stories. But maybe it was worth a shot trying. I took the crystal ball out of my pocket. Some of the Dama are the same thing, right? I think so. I thought the Dama was the same thing. The crystal ball's light was extremely weak. Maybe it's got anti magic toxin, or it's like the opposite, where if there's like a human around, I guess it would be kind of like anti magic toxin. Like if he doesn't truly believe in it, then it won't work. As it got dimmer, it was also taking longer to restore lately. After talking to her several days ago, and the light weakened again, it was having a hard time recovering. This much light wasn't quite enough. It looked like it needed a little more time to recover. <laughs> ラムネビンの玉かいとんでもない。古出神社の死法。カムの、なんたらとかいう、ありがたい宝だそうよ。ラムネビンの玉に見えるって点では。悪いけど、私も同感ね。古出神社の… When you hear all this from like an outside perspective, it does seem kind of crazy, right? Just seems like a girl with delusions. It's like she just got lonely and she just kind of conjured up a friend and is talking to her and wants to escape this world because she's not happy. Yamamoto immediately tried. He shut his eyes and let out a low groan. It probably wouldn't work. I couldn't tell if it was because it wasn't me or because the power was too weak. うーん。申し訳ないが、わしには聞こえんな。君はどうだね?羽生と話すには、ある程度の力が回復してないといけない。貸して。うーん。私でもダメね。まだ回復しきっていない水晶玉では。I pushed it tightly against my forehead, but all I felt was a cool sensation. I couldn't feel the power in it. そうか。それは残念だな。日数を重ねると多少は力が回復するようなの。時間をもらえればきっとまた会話ができるようになるわ。その時もう一度試してもらえれば。そうかい。じゃあ、もし会話ができるようになったら、ぜひわしにも会話をさせてくれないかね。ええ、もちろんよ。このままじゃ、ただの寝言か夜前言と思われて終わりだもの。その失礼な誤解を解かなくちゃ、後味が
It didn't mean he actually believed me. But if Hanyu and Yamamoto could talk, it would clear all those fears away, and then he would have to believe in the supernatural phenomenon of Hanyu and me. But the real world didn't usually work out that well. After all, even if I made Hanyu talk to him, it could end the way it always does, with Yamamoto not hearing anything. I could convey what she was saying, but he wouldn't believe it. But that didn't mean I had the option of not trying. I wouldn't give up before doing it. Uh, yep, yeah, I'd try everything. Wasn't that the lesson I'd learned from this hundred-year journey? Yakusoku I didn't actually think he'd reply like that, and it confused me. Well, I could imagine it without having to ask. He'd probably tell me to go to a largest hospital and have my head given a proper look at. Of course, there's absolutely nothing wrong with my head, so it would come up with zero results. When that happened, maybe they'd say I need to take care of my mind and give me psychotropic drugs, uh, drugs or something. I heard this from Rana once before. There's a drug that makes you incredibly lethargic, unable to do or think anything at all. Dangerous patients think terrible things and sometimes actually do them. The drug stopped that from happening. If they made me take that, it would be the same as killing me. It might seem like a fair condition, but it looked to me like the scales weren't in my favor to begin with. I shouldn't have told this stuff to a man I barely knew. After all that, I began to uh, regret my decision. Did I fool him if I said it was all a joke? Did you believe me? Nipa! That was going to be my last resort. I could use it if my attempt to have Yamamoto and Hanyu communicate fail. I couldn't abandon the possibility that Yamamoto could be my ally without trying first. Hmm. He made a suggestion, taking a notebook out of his coat and going over his other appointments. I nodded and said I agreed. Alright, that will do it for part two of my Higurashi Ray Let's Play. Uh, some pretty interesting moments. <laughs> I mean, the top one has to be Rika just pelting Sadako with a desk. Um, <laughs> it's just really sad to see how, like, Sadako doesn't just seem to be, like, neutral to Rika, but seems to actually despise her and, like, have the other kids bully her and just seeing how isolated Rika is that even Mion. Like, that made me really sad. Like, even Mion joined in. Like, Sadako's a little bit younger, so I could forgive her a little bit more for that. But that that kind of upset me. And, um, yeah, just seeing how isolated this Rika is. And this Yamamoto character. I've been saying, like, I'm thinking either Sadako or him might have something to do with this world being so different. Like, something to do with the fragments, something to do with Hanyu being repelled from the world. I don't know... How? Uh, but those are kind of like by two people I'm, I'm thinking of, because those are the two big changes is like Sadako being so mean to Rika and also like this character that shouldn't exist being in this world. Like that seems pretty big and he's getting a lot of screen time. Uh, the fact he could be an ally for Rika or maybe he is, like she said, he's just keeping an eye on her because she did kind of blab that she would kill someone if she felt like she had to to get back to her world. Um, so I know that this isn't like a super long, like this, this specific arc, like there shouldn't, I think um, maybe about halfway through, just under halfway through. So it's going to be wrapped up pretty quickly, I imagine. So I don't know if this is going to have a bad end to it, if Rika will be able to get back to uh, her world, but I'm excited to see how it's going to go from here. Uh, so thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and stay tuned next week for part three. Until then, bye. Special thanks to my top tier patrons Revealing Storm, Asborn Kennedy, Harry Gazif, Icognito, Jared Fan, and Zoran Ether.